Next is Fabricio Curry, a medical doctor from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. As a postdoc at the U U.S. National Library of Medicine, he performed clinical studies using EHR data and Medicare claims data, as well as analysis of medical dermatologies. Currently, he is at Columbia University, where he focuses on bridging observational research to clinical trials. Thank you, Melanie, and thank you, the symposium, for the opportunity to talk. This study, I hope you accept as a kind of invitation, it is uh, one of those things that uh, needs to be done, will be done, so shall we get started? We know that we can do studies that produce medical evidence analogous to clinical trials. Uh, in fact, three years ago, I did one of those studies, and personally, I was impressed by how similar the results from my study were to the results of the paper from the journal Critical Care that I was replicating. So what I want to call attention to here is what about we take this paradigm of study replication and we apply to clinicaltrials.gov. In other words, what if we took studies that are currently recruiting patients and tried to predict the results before the study gets completed. To that end, I tried to contribute a bit of, let's say, legwork. I tried to better understand uh, how feasible would it be to satisfy the data requirements of the clinical trial by means of an electronic phenotype that would be executed against an imaginary stereotypical repository of patient records. So I took from where, um, I'm sorry, there's something with the slides. I took from where Amy Wong and colleagues left off at uh, the AMIA Symposium last year. Uh, in her model, she classifies the data requirements, uh, how feasible it is to query for something. The easy things are the structured data. The hard things are those that you need to manually review the chart of the patient to know. And I added a bit of nuance on top of that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry uh, it, it was supposed to show here, but I added the notion of the presence, a parallel notion to how easy it is to query is how likely, how compatible to the standard of care is what you're trying to find. An available thing is something that is commonly done in clinical practice, and an unavailable thing is, say, an exam that has no justification as per clinical care or a drug that is not yet in the market. So using this, uh, let me try to, to briefly show how this works. These are two studies from clinicaltrials.gov. In the bottom one, quickly, the intervention is the invitation for screening for hypertension. Now, uh, even if that happens, in regular clinical practice, it is unlikely that you're going to record in the, in the patient's chart that the patient was invited to screen for hypertension. So that's considered something that is not present regardless of how hard would it be to query for that. So with that in mind, I appraised myself 648 data, individual data elements from the 25 largest phase four currently recruiting interventional studies in clinicaltrials.gov that are, do not involve placebo and have at least two study arms. A universe of 1,600 studies. And this is how the results look like. One in seven data elements, not trials, was hard. And one in five was not available. The studies had on average 25 data elements each. And most of them had at least one data element of each type. But not all of them. <clears throat> and here, I am not uh, considering the possibility that you can use a surrogate for a piece of data that you, were, you don't have, or that you can decide to ignore a piece of the study because you deem that it is not critical for answering the core research question of this study. Out of the study, out of the 25 studies that I appraised, 
I found five that I consider to be readily reproducible using observational data. Let me quickly show you three of those five. In the top one, the question is what is the best duration for antiplatelet therapy in acute coronary syndrome as measured by all-cause mortality? In the middle one, the question is which is the best anticoagulant for patients with atrial fibrillation? And in the bottom one, the question is whether the choice of drug for general anesthesia influences the cognitive ability of the patient 10 years after a surgery. Now, just to comment about this very quickly, one can argue that, for example, all-cause mortality might be hard to follow up on, but perhaps not in all countries. And the cognitive ability can be hard to query for, but the mini mental state examination is performed and it is a keyword next to a number. Perhaps you can try to make an electronic phenotype for that. So I'm not trying to claim that uh, my appra the appraisals of one person, me, is a gold standard or 25 trials are representative of 1,600. I'm just trying to claim that the outlook is the opposite of bleak. So in order to propose a conversation about this and help organize it just a bit and taking from where Amy Wong left off in her paper last year, I think it's useful to draw a distinction between the presence and what I call the queryability of a data requirement even if just because those two problems have different solutions, the presence you can try to address by reaching for privileged data sets, say a, a hospital specialized in, a, in a, a type of condition. And the queryability you can try to address by developing electronic phenotypes. So if you want to see examples of things that are hard to find or hard to query for, please visit the GitHub repository with all the res results line by line, the data elements. And I just want to finish with one last fact, which is 619 clinical trials recruiting patients right now at an average cost of $20 million per trial. How nice, to say the minimum, would it be to try to predict the results of, of at least some of those studies? We are talking maybe tens, maybe hundreds of them. And even if the results don't match, if the predictions don't match the actual results, what uh, lessons are there for us to learn by, by giving an earnest try? Thank you. <laughs>